historian, witness to these times. <laughs> what you are about to see are ghosts of the past. Events that happened once, many years ago, but now come to life again. So fly me now to a time, a description of a time. The year 68 AD, the Emperor of Nero, Gaius, Germanicus, Claudius, Nero, <laughs> <laughs> having been deposed by the Senate, abandoned by his supporters, has found no recourse left to him but to take his own life. And that he did with the help of his loyal secretary. He opened a vein, his life poured out. And so we say goodbye to Nero. But what will happen now? Word has spread. We go now to a marketplace, a place where they sell things. <laughs> <laughs> and there we see two slaves. One, Grossiana, another, Bukatia. Unica. It's a slave. And there also is a free Greek whose name is Origines. And there they converse of the day's happenings. We take you now to this. Himself. That's right. He, he opened his wrist and the blood ran red through the streets of Rome. I couldn't be happier. Yes, I believe you've taken me very literally. What I, what I meant was that he's brought it upon himself by his terrible actions upon Rome. He was, he was a, a terrible politician, a terrible one. He was an evil man. He ruled and took over my country, which is why I'm here. Yes, and that's what I mean by he brought it upon himself. <laughs> Perhaps another way to look at it is he has reaped what he has sown. Yes? Yes. I feel like if I say something again, you're just going to mock me. <laughs> that's, that's a very fair statement. I apologize. I, I mean you no offense. A girl's dying. You stand in the back. So shy, no more. Your master is not here. Speak so, your mind. My mistress is not here, and I, I kind of like Nero. I thought he was a good guy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand why you don't like. Why don't I like? I'm sorry. Because in my land where I once, it doesn't matter. But he came in. He killed my husband and my children. He took me here to enslave me in the streets of Rome where people are drinking wine and eating grapes and figs. Ugh, oh, figs. I apologize. <laughs> I overheard you speaking uh, poorly about figs. Uh, I would like to point out that figs are actually very healthy uh, pieces of fruit to ingest. They're very good for the blood and for the constitution, and quite frankly, I find they make me more intelligent when I eat them. Stop being full of things right now! Why would you say such a thing to me? Oh. That really hurts my feelings. I am being a friend to you. We are a little uh, intimidated by you because you now are free and we are not, so we don't... Well, I should be a shining example of what you can become. <laughs> <laughs> am, I, am I right? I will be free. And you will be like me. Maybe I won't be. I think I will stay slave. Maybe, maybe we should go back and scrub the, the public toilets and okay. clean the bathroom other than Fig Eater! Fig Eater! Well, if you mean that as a compliment, I take it! Fig so it was there. <laughs> Now, we go to the seat of government. 
Yes, the Roman Forum, where we find two senators. Having heard the news, they discuss the future of the Republic. Or will there be a Republic? It is true. Isilis Felix, Senator Majoris. Near or dead? Bye. Senators, those of the Popularis, my brothers of the Optimites, I address you as Senior Senator Flavius Cassiodora. And I, Isilis Felix as Junior Senator, submit to his addressing. Many thanks, my friend. <laughs> the streets of Rome have a void. Ah, Nero is no more. We are in need of a new leader, praise Juno. God Juno will shine upon us with his wisdom. And not smite us with his anger. I ask all of thou, <laughs> senators, five denarius, five denarius for each of the plebeians, 10 denarius for the patricians, in celebration of our new ascension of our leader, we have word that Governor Galvus approaches from the northern territories to claim the throne of Rome. Depending on how our brother senators feel, what say ye, senators? Yay or nay? Nay! nay. nay. And those in the positive side, what say ye? <laughs> I said, yes. <laughs> Private word, Senator. <laughs> Please talk amongst yourselves. <laughs> Senator, your bold plan to bring support from the North has unintentionally backfired. <laughs> Or did you forget that I was a supporter of Nero? It was good to me and my wife, Lydia. Nero, I loved him. <laughs> <laughs> I understand you matriculated with Galvus when you were younger boys. Yes, and we went to school together. <laughs> They're often sharing the same toga. You have learned a lot. <laughs> and you have much to learn, junior senator. Know your place. <laughs> Senators, I invite you to my home for a feast. A feast of bread and wine and fig and mutton and meats. Where we will convene and discuss the future of bread. <laughs> We fly now north to Capua, the second largest city in all of the Roman Empire. Second largest to Rome, that is. And there is a fine villa, and in that villa is one Servius Galba. And there, with him, his wife, Lepida Sabina. And also visiting these two is one Praetorian Guard, head of the Praetorian Guard, Horatius Salati. <laughs> Nero is dead. <laughs> Let me taste it. 
Enough! Your Antius. Are you loyal to me, Servius Galba? You can find the Praetorian Guard will indeed be loyal to you, should we in fact be promised a favor. I will give you a favor. A favor of money, for that is what guards enjoy. And I will increase your shield budget. <laughs> And as they converse, the mistress, the domino of the house, she disciplines an impudent slave. <laughs> Would you like some more? It, it is your desire. Oh, it is my desire. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try and peel the grapes. <laughs> yes, mistress. You may go. Well, mother, yes, daughter, seems your choice of emperor has been kind of nude in the Senate. And that's what I hear. Oh, do you? Where have you been that I don't know about? People talk, mother. I guess you're going to have to use your ways again. <laughs> Who? How far? <laughs> oh, dear mother, Rome is like a game of dice for you. Oh, it is. Hmm, let's see what I should conjure up now. Perhaps we need to Take a little trip. Oh, I like trips. Shall we bring slaves? Oh, Rosdana. <coughs> we might take a little trip. May I hit her? Please. <laughs> where are we going, mother? Well, we do need to find out what is going on. Now that Nero skinned himself. <laughs> you 
for birth. <laughs> Now we go. The road that leads north out of Rome, the Via Familia. There on that road, we see a mighty warrior, one Aulus Vitellius. He rides astride a mighty white steed. <laughs> Delicious. 
How sweet. You left your fish. <laughs> Keep it. I don't want to hold it. You hold it up. There. <laughs> Lydia, take it away, I'm done. Crawl. <laughs> Lydia, step out to the atrium. <laughs> I prayed at the festival <laughs> that your womb would be filled with my goodness <laughs> to bring me a male heir. For God. <laughs> I have prayed to Minerva. Please, this moon, this moon, it will be true. We've done it the way our ancestors have done it. And then we've also done it the way that will bring the babies. <laughs> When will you bring me a son? For our son would surely become Emperor of Rome. <laughs> I will bring you a son. I will bring you a son this year. Before the fields are fallow, there will be a son. Well, if there isn't, I'll replace you with your sister. Although I do love you. You are replaceable. And my darling, make haste. Many senators come and expect fine food. And bring some of your body slaves and oil them down. Boys for Isis. <laughs> Boys for most of them. <laughs> Go on, Lydia. Yes. I understand that, Governor, Galva may come. Treat him as a kind guest. The kindest guest. <laughs> and so it was. A woman not being able to bear a child is a woman on shaky ground. But that is another story. <laughs>
until that time doth come. But for now, we go to a party. Yes, for all are invited. The Senate, their wives, let them feast, let them drink. Also know that it is the birthday of one Flavius Cassiodorus, a surprise party fan. He knows nothing of it.
Galbus, but I was at the Senate today. In fact, many of the senators were here today and voted that Galbus was not ready to leave Rome. Am I right, senators? Yeah. It seems some of them have changed their minds. <laughs> it did sound rather vague just then. I did speak to them individually in the time between the last session and this party. <laughs> Let's take another vote. What say we? I've already taken the liberty of doing that. Now I say this is Proclamation is written ox blood. Ox blood. Ox blood. Ox blood. Ox blood. Why, it must be from the gods. Jupiter and death. <laughs> oh, Hail Sirius! Yes, for I stopped on the way here at an auger, and he gave me very propitious readings that I should be emperor. He did gasp out these words with great emotion. <laughs> You may kiss the hem of my robe. <laughs> this is my party, Galvas. Gladius. Happy birthday. You are the senior senator. I do this with great joy, Galvas. Great joy indeed. Oh, hail Sirius! Oh, oh hail Sirius! <laughs> oh, hail Sirius! Any more wine? <laughs> against him, they were taken out and put on treason trials and put to death. Yes, no one to say yes, no one to say no. <laughs> we go now to the new palace of the newly enthroned Emperor Servius Galba. He is there with Arantius, head of the Praetorian Guard, and Isilus, his supporter in the Senate. What they have to hatch for Rome, you shall soon see. And so, it is done, as we three have planned. <laughs> yes, yes, your hand goes beneath mine. I understand. Yes, I spoke to all the citizens, and I was rather swasey. <laughs> there will be time for pleasures later. For now it is a new age of Rome. Yes. I shall rule for many years. I feel it. We should all have all of the things we want. Everything. Yes, we shall have everything we want. Everything. No. You don't sound as happy as I was. <laughs> This is blood and pain and the cutting of men and the gnashing of teeth. Senator, Flavius shall be demoted. 
So mote it be! So says Galba! <laughs> so, is he just being demoted or am I being promoted? Both and both. Oh. <laughs> and Isolus were long time lovers. But that is another story. <laughs>
I'm sorry that you had to see that. But now that I am emperor, I will take what I want. Flavius, I'm absolutely all right with your recreation. But please understand, now that you are emperor, there is duty at hand. Duty? Without a male heir, we cannot secure our place in Rome. Do you understand? Yes, I do. More recreation. Yes, with me. I'm okay with that. <laughs> good. Now would be good. You seem so angry. And yet I am Rome. You are Rome. You are the wife of Rome. Has this not sunk into your womanly brain? It is sunk in. You do not know how delicate our position is. Delicate? I am supported by Isolus, the Praetorian Guard, Ollie's. I think. <laughs> well, maybe not so much him. Right. The people, you heard them. We killed those who were against me. They are dead. <laughs> ah. <laughs> and the auger, the auger, of course, that, yes. I was given goodwill by the gods. It is ordained. It is ordained. It is, it is. Chapter in the Sword of the Cross. 